good day and thanks for sticking around to our final in our series of tutorials where we are currently looking at the production of our belt roller system now in this our final tutorial we're going to be looking at the final pieces which are basically our axle and four pins um, for anchoring our system um, allow me to just extend my center line um, considering I would want for my axle to be produced on that same center line now from from our diagram already copied we would realize that our axle is produced using two different um, radius or different diameters as in this case the, in, the smaller diameter which is the part which will actually be passing through our end plate that has a diameter of um, 12 and the part which is going to be passing through our bushing will have a diameter of 18 we will remember that that's the size the bushing was made at let us go ahead and do offset so let us say offset and our smaller portion which has diameter 12 remember this is our center so we're going to be using radius instead so we're going to be going ahead and offset six millimeters from this line up yonder can i make this a little bit larger our larger diameter was 18 so let's go ahead and also offset nine that represents both ends of my or both diameters of my access system let us connect all three lines at the end in this case and our total length was 76 millimeters so let us offset the length of our pin in this case 76 and let us offset this line our 76 let us trim away these two leaving still behind your central axis we still want to keep that because we want to be revolving around that allow me to just move my pieces a little bit close a little further onto my axis all right shifting it a little bit away from the end um the inner piece of my axle is um, 46 and both ends are 15 so I'm going to offset 15 millimeters in from both ends so from both ends let's offset 15 and let us now trim away some unwanted pieces like this piece is gone this piece is gone that's gone you that piece gone that's gone and that's gone so what I'm creating is basically the profile of this um, axle um, the ends have chamfer of um, two millimeters so let us go and do chamfer the this we could use the distance method that says two millimeters from both lines Let's do multiple so we can do both ends and let's chamfer this one with this one and this one with that one there we go so we have the ends being chamfered the there is a hole which is drilled into this object and it's a hole that has um, diameter six again since we are working from the center let us go ahead and offset three millimeters up so that's the radius of the bore in the axle we'll talk about that in a bit this axle has depth 45 again let us offset a distance of 45 from this end inwards that will show us how deep in the hole actually goes let us select everything for trim and that's gone and that's gone 
should this be gone? That's gone. What else do we want gone? Oh, this external piece is also gone. All right, and so that's what is left of that. So that is intended to form the hole in the axle. I think it is for that through that hole that the grease will be fed into the system and it will be exited through this hole into the bearing thereby lubricating the internals of that. Now that hole is 23 millimeters away from from um, from this edge. So let's offset 23 from this edge inwards indicating where the hole is going to be drilled. Let me grab this and stretch a little bit out and also extend to my center line. All right. Now here's the thing. That is going to be a hole of diameter 6 and they said it's 45 depth. I think they made an error here with that 45 depth so let's ignore that 45 depth. Let's just pay attention to that 6. And here's what we do. We're going to be drawing a circle of diameter 6 and such that we can sweep that circle onto this um, line. So let us go solid and let us select sweep. What we want to do is to convert this line into being a cylindrical object. So we do we sweep this object onto this line. So let's go sweep, select the object, enter, and select the, the line you wish to sweep it onto. That line has been converted into a cylinder. And that is the diameter or the size of the hole which is going to be in the axle when the axle is formed. Um, I think the axle is pretty complete. Let's go have another closer look. It says the corner here is to have a radius, a fillet of radius 0 0.3. So um, finally, let's go fillet, fillet, our radius is going to be 0 0.3, enter. Let's also do a multiple so we can do two ends. So let's fix this one with this one. And also this corner here needs a little fixing. Now we can go ahead and join because that object is going to be revolved in a little bit. Let's check for join and let's rejoin again. J, enter, let's test. Now it has been joined. Now we can do revolve. Let's do that on our 3D side. So let's go to our solid tab select your revolve option we wish to revolve this object enter and we wished it revolved on this axis we want it revolved on this axis we want it revolved in a full 360 degrees let's say yes now the axle has been formed let us now subtract the hole or subtract the spin from the axle thereby leaving a hole in the object as a matter of fact no need for you to shift it but let me shift it to the other side such that the hole would be visible on this side over here instead so let's put it on that side instead so we can see when the hole is actually subtracted could have been subtracted on the other side but I want it visible from this particular side let us now go solid and say subtract select the portion of the object you wish to keep which in this case is this piece and also select this piece now which we wish to subtract the hole would have been drilled such if we look through that hole you might even get a glimpse of that center line which is passing through there. All right, so that's a look through the hole. 
Well, it's not really a through hole because the hole doesn't go all the way through. It comes to somewhere about here so that the grease can come out into this. But then a concern I've been having, what's to stop the grease from running back out or from flashing out when that axis starts its rotation? And so what I think is necessary is, an, is a pin that would block that hole. Now let me do um, an offset to make that pin. Let's go offset. And the pin has to be the same radius as the hole, which in this case was a radius of 3. So let's do an offset of 3 from that line up. All right. Um, let's give that pin also a cap. So let's go 3.5. And let's go from that up as well. Allow me to close off the ends and give that cap thickness of about 0 0.5. Enter. And let's do that. Let's give the pin a length of about 5 millimeters perhaps. Um, this is not cast in stone, it's subject to whatever, you know, but I don't want to use too much of a large length. Let's get rid of these pieces. Let's take this piece out. Let's take this piece off. Let's get that off. Let's get that off. Let's keep our center line. Let's do a chamfer of distance 2. All right, let's go with 2. And two with this, and oh, two is a lot. Two is very large. I think I needed um, 0 0.3. So let's go chamfer. Let's go distance. Now let's use 0 0.3. And let us use this one with 0 0.3. Did I type 0 0.3 or did I still say 3? Let's go again. I want chamfer. I want chamfer distance. Let's see. Oh, I forgot that this is um chamfer distance of mm, let's not chamfer it. Let's leave it. Let's instead do a fillet of this end up here. See, I'm trying to toy around with this. Let's use um zero point five. Let's see what happens if I try to fillet this one with this one. Gives the corner a nice look. Let's now join. So we can do revolve. And that would complete our pin. So let's do revolve. Let's go solid. And let's say revolve. Let's revolve this around our axis. And again, this is our axis. A little bit long, but it's our axis. And that is intended to be my pin that is going to be used to block or to prevent the grease. So that pin is really intended to slide into that, thereby blocking that. So it's, it's really a feature that I've actually added to the design. All right. Now what is left? our pins so let's talk about the pins quite quickly allow me to get rid of my axle diagram no need for that we've already produced that and let us now talk about our pins let's bring that into focus now these are the pins plus the washers we're going to be needing for inserting into this no dimensions or anything has been given so let us just use our own intuition um, the diameter of these holes we will be reminded that the diameter of those holes were 10 the thickness of the plates were 10 and 1020 giving us an idea as to the length pins that are actually going to be needed let's get back into CAD Let's also be working from a wire frame. Let's also be working from a wire frame. So let's select our wire frame option here. 
all right and for clarity's sake i'm going to be creating the pin at this um, station now the pin is going to have a diameter of um 10 so let's go circle diameter circle diameter when prompted for the center let us use the center of the pin oops I think I accidentally clicked on something so let's go again circle center diameter my center is going to be the center of the circle my diameter is going to be 10 enter enter so I have my pin or my circle for my pin let's give extrusion height so let's go ahead and say solid and let us give extrusion height. I want my pin to be extruded to a height of, now remembering that this piece is 10, the other is 10. 20 is going to be a little bit close, so let me go with about 23 millimeters. So let's extrude 23 millimeters. Now I have that portion of the pin. Now for the portion of the pin which passes through now for the portion of the pin, which actually the, the stock of the pin, or the crown, or the head of the pin, which is a little bit wider than the shaft. Now my shaft had diameter, um, hmm, my shaft had diameter 10, so I'm going to go with diameter 13 for the head. So let's go with circle again, home, circle. And let's go let my center diameter style and let my center be this point and I need a circle of diameter hmm. I need a circle of diameter let's work with 13 13 that gives me let's go with 14 let's see that let's see what 14 looks like so let's work with diameter 14 seems reasonable um, nothing that it stuck would have slid into the hole so diameter 13 seems fine diameter 13 seems good let's give extrusion so let's go um, solid let's go solid and let's give extrusion again no height was given to us um, let us use height of uh, let's work with about 12 millimeters let's see what that looks like and the 12 millimeter seems good I think 10 would have been better I'm gonna go with 10 so I'm gonna go extrude and I'm gonna work with a height of 10 let's see 10 10 looks better all right notice also that the edge of my pin has been filleted or chamfered I'm not certain which I'm gonna go with um, fillet for both upper and under surface what we'll do that in a bit allow us to put in that hexagonal head inside of that so from our home tab let's go and we're gonna select polygon so from your rectangle pull down let us go polygon AutoCAD asks us to specify, did I select polygon? Don't think I did. Don't think I did. Let's go again and select polygon. Polygon. Now it, no, no. Now it says specify your center point, your, your number of sides for your polygon. This polygon has um, a total of, seems like six sides, so let's give six, enter. It says to specify the center of my polygon, which is the same center of my circle. It says if asking if I want it inscribed in a circle. Let's say yes. Now it asks me what size circle do I want that inscribed in. I'm going to give um, diameter of circle to be 10. Let's work with 10. That, oh, that's what's radius. I'm so sorry. I keep messing up. Let's undo that. 
let's again go for polygon let us select our six for number of sides and our center is going to be the center of this circle now it asks us if it wants it inscribed let's say yes ask us for the radius of the circle not diameter and so we want a radius of about five and let's give enter now that's a reasonable size hexagon um, the hexagon however has to be pressed into the object so let us go and give press command from solid and we want to be pressing that hexagon down into the object negative that was 10 let's press it in negative 8 enter and now we have our hexagon pressed in the pin is basically complete allow me to just um, shift this pin up and out of the object for clarity so I'm going to be moving I am going to be moving the pin out into a clear you know just for clarity's sake so there we have our pin all right it is said that the end is to be chamfered I am not so certain as to a size for these chamfers. Let me get an idea. Um, chamfer. I'm going to be using a chamfer of 0 0.5 for those chamfers. I think 0 0.5 is good. Also, fillet of 0 0.5 is what I'm going to be using. So let's get back into CAD. And let's go fillet. Let's give a fillet radius of 0 0.5 and let us fillet this edge here giving it a nice curve also the under edge not this edge but the one under here needs to be filleted but in order for that to be filleted the object first has to be unioned all right the object would have to be unioned um, so let us go and give union solid and let us union this piece up here with this piece down here all right it is now one object view from a realistic way realizing that the pin is actually being formed i guess we're going to be opening that with an all-in key um what i was referring to is the edge under here that is supposed to have a slight curve that would enable it to fit properly into this curved edge we had given here of radius 0 0.5 all right that radius we had given there was a radius of 0 0.5 if my memory serves good gonna be checking that shortly because um we don't want to be making an error there so allow us to just go take a quick look what um, radius those had I'm not seeing where it said I'm not seeing I think it was 0 0.5 0 0.5 here it is 0 0.5 now let's go again now where's our pin at so let's go and do a chamfer we could do chamfer or fillet let's go fillet so from your home tab let's go fillet and let's select a fillet with a radius of 0 0.5 enter let's do that in the multiple so that we could grab this edge down here i think there's an edge somewhere here let's fillet that so it has a little rounded effect and let us also do this corner which i'm going to be showing shortly which is this curved up inside here let's do that one and let's fix that so it has a nice curve so it fits nicely into the slot all right and that is our pin or one of our pins four washers are also needed again no size are given for our washers 
so let us go ahead and just um, make that let's use diameter style first of all let's switch back to realistic so we can um, have a clearer view sorry to wireframe so we can see um, through what we're doing let me go ahead and draw a circle of diameter my center point let's use my same center for my circle here and my diameter is gonna be 10 now how thick we want the washer is another matter let us make that washer two millimeters thick let's go with two millimeters now so let's go with circle diameter my center point and my diameter is this time going to be 10 plus 4 14 let's go with 14 and that is the width of my washer yeah, that's going to be the width of my washer allow me to move those into a clear area again avoiding the confusion so let's move that and this one down into a clear let's turn Arthur on it's on why is it not moving straight all right so that is to be my washer allow us to press pull this washer I uh, didn't give a thickness again I'm gonna go with one millimeter so let's do solid and let's do extrude let's not use extrude let's use press pull and let us pull this washer not able to find it not a problem allow us to extrude them then out of them and I'm gonna extrude mm, gonna go with one looks good and I'm gonna be subtracting the whole so let's subtract keep the outer subtract the inner it is now a washer now we have all the pieces required for assembly let's view this in a realistic view so we can realize we actually have the washer we have the bolt and everything is here to assemble again it is best assembled from a it is best assembled from a wireframe perspective but before assembling let us ensure that we have all four let's go and view from uh, our southwest perspective all right so we have the pin for that one let's also view in a wireframe so we can see our center points a lot clearer now let's copy let's copy we want to copy that we want to copy that let us hold it at the lower let us hold it at the center of the hole as a matter of fact and at the top center and I'm going to be pasting it at the top centers for the remaining holes top center and let's find our last one even through this craziness it's not a problem for us to find it now we have positioned all four pins they just need to be moved down onto the object I'm gonna be moving the washers down first so let's go move and let us move all four washers all at once where's my other let us hold it at the lower circle and we are going to be placing that on the top circle or the top center that has been placed or those have been placed let us also move the pins down now so let us go and move our pins down four now here's the thing about the pin the top of this circle the top center mark the top center mark you'll see two there we want the top one because that top one must be placed at the top center down here now our figure is coming together 
now the axle is to be placed in the axle now need to go in first allow me to put the pin into the axle or the plug to plug that hole and let's put that point to coincide with this point uh oh I'm certain that missed let's go again matter of fact not leaving it to chance let's move it on this side so let's go move all right what we want to be selecting is this point here and that point must be placed at that point right here now the pin is in now the pin is in let us now put the entire axle into the system now let's see what has to line up with what this is a little bit tricky to put in this axle so here's what we want to do now this um where is it this center the center of this point and it's not that point the center of this point is what i'm going to be using as my lineup point so let's go now so let's go move we want to move our axle as well as the pin there's my pin there's my pin i want to find the center of this point here which is this point now that i'm going to be lining up with the outer green point which is that one have i gotten it correct i'm gonna be taking a look i think i i think i missed it i think it needs to go in some more but i'm gonna be looking at it from a front view i think it needs to go in a little bit further let's view this from a front view to see a better lineup notice i'm seeing quite clearly now that the axle still needs to be in some more so um, let's just slide until that line gets onto that line right there now my axle is seated properly in the thing let's view from a realistic view that the object is now complete allow me to also remove my center line and change a few colors a bit um, let's bring up my properties so I can change a couple of colors uh, let's give the bushing a different color or the washer another color perhaps hmm, what have I not used perhaps magenta could have made the washer a little bit thicker than the a little bit thicker than the, the head of the knot but that's fine let's do match props and let's paint that let's pick that color let's pick that color come on zoom properly and stop that so we can give that color to this washer miss it miss it I have to search for it I think it's the first one it's that one oh my I painted the wrong thing all right now I think I have it um, let me also do some more painting just gonna be painting just the washer so let's select that washer and allow me to go and for some strange reason it's not zooming so lively here I guess it's the bunch of colors that which one is it I think it's that one and also there is another one I'm gonna have to orbit to find it I think it's sitting quite comfortable here you see it's not noticeable and so I really need to give it a different look making it a little bit more noticeable inside there notwithstanding the fact that these are not the ultimate colors these are not the final colors for the piece it's just to have each piece properly represented that we have our figure now complete this is a pin i was referring to that is now blocking the the hole so the grease can no longer escape from that
our drawing, our roller belt support system is now complete from a front view or from a yes from a front view that's what it is from a left end view again that's what it is from a top view that's what it is I thank you for watching I hope that you found these series helpful and that you are now able to produce this and similar objects based on the procedures and the commands given. See you again in our next tutorial. Thanks for watching.